they have the fermented sauce all nice and sanitized. My problem here is I need to get one of those cubes into there. I'm going to have to use a funnel. There's no way in the world I'll get it into that is it four inches or something, 10 centimeters hole. I think this is going to get very messy. I do have a large funnel, you'll see in a second. But I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of foam from it splashing all the way down to the bottom. And I reckon we're going to have foam out and all over the sides of the fermenter. This is worst case scenario. And I've got a broken hand trying to juggle this um, fresh wort cube. So it's going to be quite interesting. But I'll let the camera roll and we'll see what happens. So the worst case scenario, probably besides it foaming everywhere, which I'm thinking it's probably going to, is me dropping this cube. They're very heavy. Don't underestimate that it's only 23, 24 kilo. Just to worm it in and stop it splashing everywhere it isn't the easiest if you've tried to do it before. Especially when we're going into something like this. But uh, I did consider standing on the step, so I had a bit more height over it once the funnel's in. But uh, let's just go for it. I'm getting it on the floor somehow. Got a lot of foam already. Keep splashing it up. Nice clear work. Oh, I just made it before it's starting to foam out. Just. This is going to be a bit awkward when I put the floating cube in. I should have taken a reading. Oh, there's still a little bit in there. That's a bit murky. Let me just get that out. Get on there. 28 degrees. Looking at that again now it's settled down. Look, it's just about spot on, 46. Apparently this yeast goes right off and uh, let's have a look and see how it goes. I'll just show you a quick thing about a tip about these, which I just did before. But this is the yeast that I'm pitching into the pale ale I brewed in the first, the uh, Maiden Voyage Pale Ale for the Brazilla. Now I'll just give a little hint about these. I haven't used this brand, I haven't used one of these for a few years now. Um, and I haven't used this type of yeast. But before you, sh you know, you shake it up to mix up all the yeast. Then you open it and put it in. What usually happens if you shake it up is it can spurt out. But I've found, and I'm not sure how, if it's going to work this time, if you crack it first, let that gas out, then you shake it. And make sure it's all mixed up. It's not so bad. So that's the problem, see, it gets stuck. And this is only about five minutes since I did that video, so I think I'm going to probably get a little bit of spray out of this, maybe. And that. Oh, there is a bit. Still it over the top of here. No, it's fine. See, but that, if I hadn't have opened that lid before, it would have uh, probably sprayed out. Now, I'm going to try and make sure we get all that in. Come on, get out. No, that's pretty good. She's empty. I'll put the pressure lid on. Screw up. Do use a pressure relief valve, which I'm going to set up in a minute and put on them, especially with this yeast. 
I think it's going to go off like a rocket. Yeah, you can hear that gas coming out. I've just put some pressure on top using CO2, of course, just so I can hook up my P, my pressure relief valve, and adjust it to where I want it. So it's probably at about 8 psi or something now. It doesn't need to be that. There's no, I'm not saying that it has to be 8, but it just lets me know that the PR valve is going to work if the pressure builds up in there and I haven't got it set too high. So it's two o'clock by the time I've moved it into position. Got a little bit of stuff settling out. That hiss isn't the gas coming out still, that's the fridge just turning off because it turned on, I turned it off again. I've set it to 30. Yeah, it can go higher, but I'm just going to do it. Just going to leave it with no heating and see how it goes. But the fridge will kick in if it gets to 30. Pumping out. It's about 3 o'clock on Sunday morning. I should be in bed. Oh, it's climbed up to 29 degrees. Holy moly. That noise is the, the gas coming out. Not that that's unusual. That is going to be it, crazy. Saturday morning, uh, it's 10 o'clock. Normally I'd up that pressure a little bit, but I'm not too worried. I've got a dry hop anyway. But that Krausen is just about gone. Was very much on its way down. I don't know if you can tell. That's just, yeah, it's right down the bottom here. And we are at 29.2 degrees. As I said, there's been no heating or cooling on this, but it is very warm here. But uh, that yeast is just uh, keeping itself warm at the moment. It's now about 6.30, which is what, I don't know, it's about uh, 28 hours since I pitched the yeast. And I can tell that sound of gas or CO2 escaping is getting much softer. I can see the wort through the Krausen. 
There's still action, but nowhere near as much. It's, I reckon it's time to dry hop. So I'm going with, I was going to go 200 grams of hops, but I thought I might want to try and get some of those uh, yeasty ester aromas and flavours, which I probably still will anyway, but I've just, I've taken it down a little bit to uh, 60 grams each of a mosaic and a citra, 120 grams all up. And a big shout out to uh, Tim Huntsman from Huntsman Brewing on YouTube, I'll leave a link to his channel. Without these hops, that would this brew would not have been possible. Thanks very much, man. Appreciate it. I should say I'm going to shut the bottom off too, so I can keep that yeast clean. I don't suggest doing this, but my hand is broken somewhere. So, these plastics can be brittle. I've never broken one of these, but you never know. I don't suggest doing it, but I have no choice. Get some bloody rubber. Of course, the rubber falls off when you don't want it to. I'll try and get them in. I'm not going to purge this out because it's still fermenting slightly. I think it'll be alright. You could purge it out with some CO2 if you wanted to. It's only at zero because I just dry hopped, of course. And I'll take that bottle off tomorrow. I'm a bit worried about the pressure building up. Maybe I should do it tonight. Yes, I should. So, yeah, I've decided to take this out now because the pressure will build up and I'm not sure how much it's going to build up. Um, I couldn't find the proper lid. It's around somewhere. But I know the soda stream bottles are the same thread, so I'm hoping this is going to fit that bottle. It's in a, a soda stream cap. Got some star sand in the moment. This is going to get messy. But I'll put the cap straight on. And I'll spray inside once I pull the bottle off just to clean it with some star sand or some uh, stellar sand or whatever it's called these days. <laughs> and yeah, you can see it's the pressure building up in there already, so it's going to make a mess. The yeast is still going off. Um, there'll be enough in here though to finish the brew without any problem. Now this, even though you put it in the fridge, can keep fermenting, so it is worth, I'm going to put this straight in the fridge once I get it off. It is worth maybe degassing it, just, you know, and screw it back up and put it back in the fridge uh, every couple of days, at least at the start. So let's see how we go, eh? It's going to be messy. Don't go, don't come out. Can you see that? Pull that star scene out. At least uh, with that foam there, I know... There shouldn't be much oxygen in there. Now, yeah, is that sealed? I can't see any leaking out, so I'm guessing it, it's sealed enough. As I said, I'll whack that in the fridge now. But the pressure will keep building up. And give this a quick clean. I'm not going to look in there or even try to wipe it. That should be enough. I'll leave that little catch of drips while it dries. All right, well, she's dry hopped. I'll leave that about three days. Four days, maybe. And uh, 
splash to it. The pressure up top, I don't know if you'll see it from down here, has already gone back up to the 5 psi. I can't hear it coming out yet. But it's already built right up. Still chugging along. It's now Sunday morning, about well, 7.30 or something. It's a bit surprising. I thought that might be done. But it doesn't matter. Just come out to check at about six o'clock on a Sunday, and the gas stopped coming out. That means she must be just about done. You can actually see, I don't know if you can see, it's starting to clear, the yeast is starting to clear at the top there. I think that's what that is. The hops are starting to drop out a little, and whatever yeast there is. Well, that looks like hops. That is hops. Yeast down there. And we're sitting at 28.4. Temp's starting to drop a little. It should be okay there to finish off. four o'clock Monday and I put the heat belt in just to bump it up because it was dropping temp so hopefully it finishes off nice and I don't know if you can see it on the camera but you can actually see the stuff's dropping out the yeast and the hops have started dropping out Actually, if I could keep my hand still, you can see it falling. So it's been three days in the, with the dry hop now, which is plenty. I think I'll crush it today. You can see that the yeast clearing out. And the stuff from the hops is there too. Now it's in the afternoon now. Actually, I actually meant to do this earlier. Time got away for me, from me. I'm just going to uh, take a reading. I'm pretty sure this is going to be done. Just about to crash, so but just to keep people happy, I'll uh, try and take a small reading. There's a bit of junk in that, so I'll just start that again. That's nice and hoppy, but I am picking up. Oh, it's not bad though. I am a, like a different yeast smell than I'm used to, of course. Using normally using USO5. And 
Well, it actually smells quite nice. So we're probably at nine or eight. So, cold crush has been going for about 24 hours now. As you can see, all the hops have dropped out. You can see the different levels. The yeast was dropping out, then the, when I put the hops in, then when the ferment finished, and then the cold crash, you got a bit of yeast and a bit of hop. That won't be quite full up to there. It'll be built on the, stuck on the side a little bit. There's a fair bit of hop in there though, it'll be quite full. Starting to clear up pretty well. So now we're transferring into a keg. It's just a warning, which I didn't realise I'd done. I'd uh, pushed the fermentosaurus a bit too far back and it was against the fridge. And I very nearly had a bit of slushy. Trouble is that little bit of uh, Gunk from the Krausen has fallen into the beer, and you really don't want that in your beer because Krausen is usually very bitter and tastes horrible. You can see it floating on the top there. So luckily I'll stop before that gets into the keg. And hopefully it stays there in that one piece while I'm filling the keg. I don't have to worry about it if you can see it there. Impromptu video, I didn't know I was going to do this. This is just after I... Uh, Close, enclosed transferred the beer to a keg. I just sort of halfway through one, I thought I'd try it. I gave it a quick carb. You know, it's not ideal, and I don't do, often do the quick carb, but I'm going away for a week. So, and I've heard stories that uh, you can have this yeast very fresh. These beers, not that I love all my beers very fresh. Um, I don't know if I've got used to it, or it's just always the way I've liked it, fresh beer. Give me a beer from a bright tank any day, or fresh from a brewery, or fresh at home. And I didn't go overboard with the carb, I didn't want to overcarb it. It's very cloudy, as you can see. Um, but I did dry hop in the middle of the ferment, or towards the end of the ferment. It made clear. It got down to 108, or 9, as you saw. Oh, I meant to put that in the beer smith. Just checked here, yeah, so that makes it about 5%. Now, I am getting some sort of yeasting, um, some sort of yeasting aroma. And it is a little bit sulfury. It's not, oh, it's not fully offensive. I can spill it then, I thought I did. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Useless. Um, there is a yeast, to me, there's a, a yeast aroma which is a bit sulfury. It's not full on, and it seems to, uh, when I was halfway through the other one, I went, oh, it's sort of dissipating pretty quick. So maybe, might, that might clean up. And when I smelled it, I went, oh no. But I gave it a fair dry hop, and all I'm really getting is the yeast. Oh, no. Nah. The dry hop is coming through, but the, the yeast is like, like a, it forward in, in the aroma. See, so the more you smell it, whether I'm getting used to the yeast smell or it's dissipating, the uh, hop starts coming through, but the taste, when I taste it, the taste is really good. I'm not getting any of that you know, sometimes you, you smell the sulfur something and you can taste it. Or, you know, you stress the yeast and uh, you might be throwing green apple and you get it in the aroma and you get it in the taste. I'm not getting that. This looks like an NIPA for me. Again, it's not quite as dark as it looks on camera. No light behind me. Sun shifted.
but it's very drinkable and very nice so far. Um, so I'm not going to be able to taste this again for another week, a bit over a week, week and a half. Actually, it'll be nearly two weeks. <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd show that and try it. Because it was uh, under brewed under pressure, only low pressure. I just gave it a minute and a half of the rock and roll. I, I just wanted to taste it. And as you can see, it's uh, while it's not fully carved, it's not flat either. I'm still not a big fan of the aroma. And I'm a bit annoyed it's overtaken all the hops I put in it, but that might fix up in a few days. But I've always, uh, even the, the other nice beers I've had with this yeast, there's always been that little something. And I don't know if it's just because it's a, you know, a newish flavour. Because I haven't had that many. And there's been, you know, six months in between. So I'll have one or two of a beer and then I won't get to taste another one for a while because I haven't used it. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with that beer. It's juicy too. It's a very nice. It's just the aroma I'm not a huge fan of. And it's got to be the yeast. I don't know what else it would be. And it smells, as I said, it smelled a little bit sulfury at the start. It's a, it just sort of smells a little bit dirty. A little bit Norwegian farmhouse, I guess, or something, you know what I mean. But it's good. Cool, happy with that. That should clear up nicely. If it clears up, I'm not sure. It's supposed to be a high flocking yeast. I was nearly thinking about gelatin, but I don't put gelatin in any of my other beers, so. Let's see what it looks like in a week. Cheers. Let's keep in mind that I only pitched the yeast for this last Thursday, and today's Thursday. Here's another quick look at the uh, Quake beer <laughs> that I use that Quake yeast with. Um, and as you can see, it's probably, what is it now? It's Thursday now. <laughs> I had to stop and check the dates. It's two weeks since it was kegged and it's still very cloudy. I mean, the bottom of the keg, I did have a few beers out of it last night. I need some light. It's not working at all, is it? Sun behind it, and it's quite cloudy. Still, so after two weeks in the keg, it's still very hazy. But the good thing about it is the sulfur is gone. I was picking up sulfur when I kegged it that day before I left to go to Beechworth and I went to Queensland after that. I got back a couple of days ago. But it's still very cloudy. I'm not sure. I know because I did dry hop during the ferment. So that will add some haziness. But, yeah, I don't know. It still looks a little hazy in the uh, fermenter. I can't pick up anything off. Like, you know, I've got an inflection or anything like that. There's a lovely aroma of the Citroen Simcoe. I probably should have dropped the Simcoe a little bit. But saying that, it's so close to the... Um, like it's too bitter for a Jedi juice. Oh, this glass has got a crack in it. Bugger. Um, it's got that Jedi juice thing about it, except it's much bitter. It's got a lot of bitterness there. But I'm enjoying the bitterness. And it wasn't meant to be an IPA or anything. But it's very cloudy. But it's drinking really well and tasting really good. It's so close to an IPA, but a bitter NIPA, but yeah, I know, I know. It's a cloudy XPA. It's actually hoppier than a lot of the IPAs I've tried lately, even fresh ones from breweries. But it's very nice. Cheers.